everyone welcome to a new video of my Simulink beginner series in this video I'll be covering a bunch of tips and tricks that will be very useful for those of you who are very much interested in using Simulink for your job or you know school project uh, these tools are very useful to build very large models and you will need to learn them at some point in your academic or industry career so, so let's begin we we'll be starting off with project files in Simulink or .prj these are very commonly used to make one go on new Simulink project and go on blank project. I'm um, just save it somewhere and give it a name. And when you're done, press create. Press yes to make a new folder. So within a project, you can have a bunch of files, MATLAB or Simulink. So let's make a new MATLAB script. I'll we'll call it run first or doesn't matter. It's up, it's up to you. Um, define two variables just for demonstration A and B. So A is 10, B equals 20. And we can now define a Simulink script also in this project file. So define a new model. I'll give it a name. And let's open that model. Now I'm going to teach you how you can change the default Simulink font. For those of you who care about fonts like me. So go on File, Preferences. And you can set the font defaults there. So very useful tool. Now I'm um, dragging two constants. I'm going to eventually show you the bus feature. So, so this is just the building blocks of that. So define two constants A and B. And mux them as well. So make them into a vector. But first we can hide the block names like this if you want to. So I'll mux them into a vector. So it becomes from a scalar into a vector. So this is obviously a two dimensional vector. Next, we can drag in some other signal. I'll just drag in one more signal. It's up to you what it is. For me, I did, did a step in a transfer function. I'll hide the block name once again. Uh, let's run that, the run first file. So now there's load in the workspace, right? Now you can actually save your MATLAB workspace if you didn't know that. So go on save workspace there and give it a name. So this will store all the variables which are currently inside the MATLAB workspace. If you if you double click on any of the variables, it tells you the variable type, a double and the value as well. So a very useful tool there. Now go back in your model and let's continue with the bus definition. So now we, we have to go into in signal routing and drag in bus creator. Now bus is referenced by name. So you have to give the bus signals a name. This is very important because it comes into play with very large models. You can just identify a signal by its name. To do that, right click on a signal, go into properties and specify a name there. So I call it vector for now. The second one, I call it scalar. So do that. Now we have a bus object which contains two signals. We can also name signal A and B if you want to, but it's not mandatory because A and B is vector, right? Now I'll show you another block which I have not used before. Go into math operators. And drag in a sum block, but this sum is the sum of all elements. So this can be very useful when calculating things like absolute value, magnitude, and so on. Make a subsystem and mask it. So hit control M on the subsystem block like this. Hit control M now. And then you can actually display math notation or do what I did here. Put text mode to on and then put a math notation there. So I just put my name VD. So you, you can see how it shows up in math notation, right? So cool. Now open that subsystem and let's use now the bus selector feature. So now if we create a bus, we can off signals back from the bus. So you have to go on to bus selector in this case and drag in that and select the signal which you want to do. For me, I did vector and press OK and connect it. So you can see how it's showing up there. Um, let's now drag in a bunch of display blocks. So I want to show you how you can process the output within MATLAB. You actually don't need a scope. 
like always so now you can highlight a signal to source and you can see how it it puts it back to its source so it starts there and then originates at a right so that's also a very useful tool hit play now and you can see how it sums it up there so you have 20 plus 10 and the output it's showing you there so now we just have the time right because it's for 10 seconds let's once again uh, load run first rm there now if you want to output the signal you have to actually go in the top view model and then output that so now we just have the time right but you have to um, actually go in the top level model and then output that so now if you do it you can see how we have the outputs there y out so that's your display the sum which you just did before we can also output a scalar value so for the second signal you will see how it becomes it comes in the second column there so that's also very important you can actually access this from matlab as i'm doing here so you can say x equals y out dot one and y equals y out dot two you can plot them if you want to you can get the length and so on um we can just quickly change the solver so going to model configuration parameters it's a bit slow but it opens up so make it fixed time make it ode4 and then put a sample time there you can see that the values change because now we have a lot more value since the time step is smaller so it becomes a thousand right if you just clear the workspace again and if you just like do it one more time just from a fresh start now if you give that signal a name you can log the data like this so log data and i just put my name there vin um now watch this okay just uh, you see that sign there so that's logging it i'll run that and go in the model now now you can actually run the model from matlab so go on sim and then put the model name there you see the logs out value that's my signal so that's where i put my name logs out uh, so let's open it up and see what's in there you can see it there but you have to go into matlab and like open it from that so let's uh, put clc for now so logs out so you can see how name shows up there win that's the signal i chose so logs out dot get element and in brackets put my name there win so you can see how the values are loaded into matlab there so you can just use that vd dot values and then dot values or data so that's the value which i just outputted so you can actually access this from matlab too and these are very useful tools which will help you in your job and for very large models so i'm back after a long time i know you know just it's been busy with school and when my master's degree is almost done i did receive very positive feedback in that post which i had put in, in the community section so i thank you all for understanding and i do have a lot of content for this year planned especially because my thesis is in the field of mpc or model predictive control as you all may know and i'll be making videos on that coming ahead so especially for autonomous driving because that's a very relevant field which mpc is applicable to so with that being said thank you for watching once again and if you have any questions or comments let me know in the feedback or message me on instagram and i'll talk to you soon bye